I'm ranking the best Boston sports teams of my lifetime, which happens to be since 2000. Starting off at number 10, we have the 2013 Boston Red Sox, and let me tell you, this team was an absolute joy to watch. I mean, after the Boston Marathon, they really brought the city together. They had a dirt dog, grit, grind mentality, but they weren't the best. Like, let's face it, the fact that they won that World Series, the fact that they even made the playoffs was a total fluke. I mean, Shane Victorino finished second on the team in war, but let, make no mistake, this team may have been one of the most fun teams that I've ever had the pleasure to watch. I mean, the, the comebacks in the playoffs, you want to talk about the Detroit series alone with Ortiz and Victorino and the Grand Slams, and then they came back, Koji picking off Colton Wong in the World Series. There were so many things to like about this 2013 Red Sox team, but I can't put them any higher on the list because of the talent disparity between this team and a couple others that rank a little bit higher. Up next, we have the 2022-23 Boston Bruins, and yes, this is the most recent team on this list, and they set an NHL record with 65 wins and 135 points. Yes, they didn't get it done in the playoffs, but that team was an absolute wagon. They were loaded on all fronts, and Don Sweeney went in at the trade deadline and made them better with Tyler Bertuzzi and Dmitry Orlov. That team... They didn't have a single three-game losing streak until the playoffs. It just happened to be that their only such streak of the year was at the worst possible time. I mean, they were 34, 4, and 3 at home. It really didn't feel like they could lose a game until, of course, they finally did. I'm never going to forgive the Florida Panthers for spoiling what could have been a storybook end to the careers of Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci. They didn't win at all, as a lot of the teams that are later on this list did but the 2022-23 Bruins deserve the spot on this list. Checking in at number eight, we have the 2016 Patriots, and yes, they do own the second best comeback in sports history and the best on a championship game stage, all I need to say are the numbers 28 to three, but they don't get to go higher on this list because let's face it, they, their team was good. It wasn't an all time great team. Yes, they had the league's number one scoring defense, and yes, a four game suspension began the year for Tom Brady, but it ended in a world championship. They had Julian Edelman, they had Martellus Bennett, they had Danny Amendola, Chris Hogan. That was really the heyday, if you will, of the later dynasty Patriots. It felt like things were clicking, and then of course, the Super Bowl happened. I'm not gonna lie to you and sit here and say that I believe the whole time, because I didn't, but thank God I never stopped watching. This team, like many Patriots teams of yesteryear, was a buzzsaw. They only lost two games all year, one without Brady against Buffalo, and one in a Super Bowl rematch against the Seahawks. There's really nothing more to say than this team other than the comeback. I mean, it's the defining characteristic of this season. Patriots fans are really still living off the high from that comeback. The New England machine kept rolling and delivered an all-time moment that we'll have over the Falcons and the rest of the NFL for the remainder of our lives. At number seven, we have the 2008 Celtics. Yes, the big three in Miami were really what grabbed all the headlines, but the era of big three started in Boston with the acquisitions of Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen. Garnett brought the toughness, the grit, the moxie, the, the firepower, the chutzpah that the Celtics needed to get over the top, and Ray Allen provided the spacing, the sharpshooting. It was a match made in heaven with Paul Pierce. Their 66 and 16 season almost ended in the first round as they struggled against the Atlanta Hawks, but they got it together, they got past that round, and then talk about the teams that they beat to go and win that title. They outlasted LeBron and the Cavs in a seven game thriller thanks to Pierce's unreal game seven effort at the Garden. They then took down what at the time was the class of the Eastern Conference in Detroit. And then finally they went and beat Kobe and the Lakers. Look no further for their spirit, their incredible turnaround under Doc Rivers than a 20 plus point comeback in game four to take a commanding 3-1 series lead in Staples Center, a lead that they would finish the series with uh, two games later in game six with an all-time blowout. This 2008 team is the only Celtics championship that I've been able to witness so far and who knows, maybe we get another one this year. But for now, this is the best Celtics team of my lifetime and it's not close. At number six, we have the 2014 Patriots. And this is not an indictment against this team because I absolutely love this team, but it's really just a testament to how many great teams that we've seen walk through this city this millennium. This team was disgusting. I was not necessarily uh, aware to watch games when I was, you know, the, the, the early Patriots teams of the 01, 03, 04, and we'll get to them a little bit later. I was aware of this 14 team. This is the first Super Bowl that I can remember watching and by God was this team awesome. 
you had a healthy Gronk, Edelman, Brady, of course, on offense. Shane Vereen and Steven Ridley were the backs. You got Revis, you got Browner. This secondary and this defense in particular was loaded with talent. Chandler Jones and Dante Hightower making big plays. And this team was incredible. They had an early stumble in Kansas City. The sky is falling. Belichick says, we're on to Cincinnati. They go out, destroy the Bengals, and don't really look back. They produced one of the all-time non-championship games of my lifetime. What I consider to be probably my favorite. A divisional round win over the Ravens. Back and forth. The double pass from Edelman. Incredible game all around. And it's against hated Baltimore. I despise, I still despise the Ravens. It was incredibly satisfying to beat them. You have the deflate gate game against the Colts in the AFC title game. And then you fast forward to the Super Bowl. One of the all-time Super Bowls and my favorite, uh, personally, Super Bowl 49 between the Seahawks and Patriots was an instant classic. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick snapping their 10-year drought when it comes to winning world championships and staving off Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson's bid for a second straight. 28-24, Malcolm Butler stepping up in the big moment when you needed him the most. What is there really to say about this team? I love this. If I had to pick one team, this is probably number two in terms of my favorite, but it had to be number six in terms of best teams. The 2011 Bruins check in at number five on my list. And in a league that even back then, in 2011, was really trending towards speed and skill, the Bruins represented a throwback. The heavy, hard-nosed, physical, get in your face, don't be afraid to beat you down, big, bad Bruins of old. This team was incredibly fun to watch. You really love when they would get into Donnie Brooks with the Canadiens or whoever they happen to be facing on a given night. They were accountable. They fought for each other. Andrew Ferentz, Sean Thornton, Adam McQuaid, the list goes on and on. This team, talk about a playoff run. Talk about an all-time playoff run. Nothing beats beating your arch rival in seven games in overtime to really get the monkey off your back, especially after you spot them two early games, fall into an 0-2 hole, and come back and beat the Canadiens. What can top it? You go in and face Philadelphia, the team that you blew a 3-0 series lead to the year before, sweep them out of the playoffs and knock them aside as if you were swatting a fly. Waiting in the conference final, Vincent LeCavalier, Marty St. Louis and the Lightning, Dwayne Rolison, you beat him on Nathan Horton's game-winning Game 7 goal again! Another Game 7 winner for Horton, who happened to be lost in the next series against the President's Trophy winning Canucks. That Canucks series was incredible. I was only 11 at the time. I remember it like it was yesterday. The sky was green, I think, for Game 1 or Game 2 of the Cup Final. They lost those first two games and it had people thinking that it was over. Game 3 comes, Horton gets knocked out, and something, you woke up the big giant grizzly bear. They came back, and once they scored that first goal in Vancouver in Game 7, you had to feel pretty good about it because the, the team that scored the first goal in that series won all seven games. Tim Thomas, a season for the ages, arguably one of the best of all time for a goalie, and the cup has never been higher when lifted by Zdeno Chara. It's been the only cup team of my lifetime. They came close a couple more times. They didn't get it done, which honestly makes 2011 that much sweeter. At number four, the 2004 Boston Red Sox. Remember when I said the 28-3 was the second best sports comeback of all time? That's because the Yankees 3-0 comeback ALCS 2004 has to be number one. I can't be the only one that knows the ESPN 30 for 30, Bill Simmons and Lenny Clark talking about this series by heart, word for word almost, Dave Roberts steals his base, David Ortiz coming in clutch, Kurt Schilling, the bloody sock, and then Johnny Damon finishing the deal in Game 7. It gives me goosebumps just thinking about it now. One of my great regrets is that I'm not a little bit older, so I can't remember this. I have to experience it through clips and highlights, but they, let's, let me tell you, they more than do it justice. This team was the idiots. This team was the team that had just lost a heartbreaking Game 7 to Aaron Boone and the Yankees the year prior. They faced down the evil empire, being themselves, being a great team by the way. The fact that they were the wild card team is only because the Yankees were that good. Those are the two best teams in the American League that year. They deserved to face off in the ALCS. It was an absolutely stunning finish. They finished the deal of course against the Cardinals about 10 days later, snapping the curse, 86 years, history. Sox really haven't looked back, four World Series this century, but the 2004 team stands alone above everything else because, let's face it, they started it. Coming in at number three, we have the 2004 Patriots. The 2001 and 2003 Patriots both won Super Bowls, but it was this team that truly cemented the dynasty label for New England in the early 2000s. 
This was the height of the early Patriots dynasty. They had a suffocating defense, a great ground game led by new acquisition Corey Dillon, and a coaching staff that could really out-scheme and out-maneuver basically anybody. Tom Brady was really starting to blossom. This team was incredible. Yes, they dropped an early game to the Steelers on Halloween night, but they went back and avenged it in the AFC Championship game, despite Brady being under the weather. After that, beating the Eagles was a mere formality. Three titles in four seasons. This was probably the greatest Patriots team of my lifetime, and there's a reason no one has won back-to-back -back titles since that Patriots team did it in 2004. I know what you're thinking. Number two, the 2007 Patriots. And I want to get a disclaimer out of the way right now. This is not about my favorite teams because this team would not be this high on this list. But this is about the skill, the winning, the points, everything that this team gave us throughout the year before ultimately falling just short of the ultimate sports goal, perfection. This team was incredible. I mean, you have Randy Moss with arguably the greatest single season for a wideout ever. Tom Brady, 50 touchdown passes, the league MVP. You had a great defense. Junior Seau was here, Ronnie Harrison, Teddy Bruschi, all these other guys. This team deserved to win it. I know that they didn't against the Giants. But again, this is not about my favorite teams. That would be a completely different list. I can only go on what this team put on paper, how this team performed relative to its peers. This 2007 Patriots team has come the closest of any team to matching the 1972 Dolphins undefeated record. They came oh so close. I wouldn't trade the other Super Bowls for this one. I really don't think I would because I've enjoyed watching them. But this one, this one was probably the first Super Bowl that I can actually remember. I can barely, vaguely remember this 2007 Patriots team, and it still hurts that they didn't get the job done. When creating this list, number one was easy. I had to pick a team that had won a title and dominated the league while doing so. And the 2018 Red Sox fit the bill. A franchise record in wins, a disgusting lineup all the way through, MVP Mookie Betts, but a blossoming star, Rafael Devers, who really came on late and in the playoffs against the Dodgers. You had Xander Bogarts, Andrew Benintendi, J.D. Martinez, the lineup, the rotation had Chris Sale, David Price, Rick Porcello, Erod, Nathan Avaldi. This team was about as dominant as I've seen a team in my lifetime. Frankly, I believe they spoiled us as fans because we've never seen winning that easy. They went through the 100-win Yankees, the 100-plus win, Astros and a juggernaut Dodgers team and only lost three games in the playoffs. That is insane. They made everything, even when things felt like they were teetering, they never really were. They were never in danger of getting eliminated. They were in control basically the entire time from the start of the season all the, all the way to the end. Alex Cora could not stop pressing the right buttons in his first season at the helm of the Red Sox. This team was an absolute joy to watch. I'm happy to have the number one on my list. And let's face it, they were a no-brainer. They're arguably one of the five best teams to ever take the diamond in the 100-plus year history of baseball and the World Series. What did you think of my list? Did you like it? Did you have something that you would have changed? Do you have an entirely different list altogether? And what other list do you want to see me make? Please comment, uh, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. It really means a lot. Uh, I appreciate you guys sticking with me through this break. Hope to have many new videos in the new year. But until then, uh, I'm Jeremy from Assholes with Mikes saying thank you and goodbye everybody. Peace.